Hi, I'm Rich Harris and welcome back to my Asian Bite series. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you one of my all-time favourite. It's a classic Malaysian dish of beef rendang. Slowly stewed beef, full of spices, lemongrass, ginger and garlic. And it's absolutely delicious. Now the first thing we need to do is toast the spices. So the spices I've got here are some of the ones that are central to Malaysian cooking. I've got star anise, cinnamon, cumin, cloves and cardamom as well. And the most important thing with these spices is that we roast them off to get the full flavour out of them. So I'm just going to put them into a dry frying pan all together and just keep shaking them around gently. Roasting spices is a really, really important part of making any curry. There's two ways of telling that your spices are toasted. One, use your eyes. These cumin seeds are starting to turn a deep nutty brown so we know that they're almost done. But also use your nose, they're starting to smell really fragrant, getting all that flavours of the star anise, the cloves and the cumin coming up at me. So now the spices are toasted, just take them off the heat and I'm using this. It's a lovely old Indonesian coffee grinder that I picked up in a flea market and it does a great job of grinding spices. If you don't have one of these, a pestle and mortar will do or one of the more modern electric spice grinders. I'm just going to spoon the spices inside. These spices, particularly things like cinnamon and star anise and cloves, are central to Malaysian cooking. They add such a depth of flavour and go brilliantly with the beef. Now toasting and grinding your own spices might seem like quite a lot of effort. And you might think, why not just buy them ready ground? But it really does make a difference. There may seem like a lot of ingredients in this dish, but really it's just throwing it all together and then letting it cook slowly. But for a full list of ingredients, see the description box. So it's quite a workout. Get your guns going, but it's definitely worth it because that is gold dust. It smells amazing. It's really, really deep roasted flavours. The cinnamon, cumin, and really the star anise as well. It just smells great. All great curries in Southeast Asian cooking are based around one thing, which is a spice paste. And it's really important you get this bit right, because then the rest of the curry just follows. So next to add, I've got a load of dried red chilies. It's about 10, 12 red chilies, and they've just been soaked in a bit of warm water just to rehydrate them. So pop them in. Then a load of chopped lemongrass, it's going to add loads of fragrance to the curry. Some shallots, ginger and garlic, a spoonful of salt, and then some of this. This is tamarind water, so it's just tamarind seeds that have been soaked in warm water and strained. And this adds a really great sourness to the dish. Pour that in. And then finally, a couple of spoonfuls of vegetable oil. Lid on and blitz it. So if you like the look of this, click the subscribe button, follow us on Twitter, or come find us on Facebook. Now, this is ready to rock. I've got a nice heavy base casserole here, just heating up over a medium to high heat. We don't need any oil in there because there's already oil in the spice paste. So straight in. And at this point, stand back. Don't be tempted to just get your face in and have a good waft because there's chilli in there that's going to blow your face off. So straight... <coughs> See, told you. I got too close. Don't do it. All right. This is catching the back of my throat and burning my eyes, but it's fine. It's all in the name of food. So now our spice paste is almost cooked off. It's time to add the star ingredient. This stuff here. This is our beef. It's chuck steak. And what I've done is taken one large piece and just put, cut it into really nice big cubes. What you're looking for is this beautiful marbling on there. That's going to all render out that sort of collagen and fat. It's going to render out and give us beautifully tender beef. So chuck all of that straight in. Give it a good old mix up so that spice paste completely coats the beef. This is where you really start to build the flavours and it all gets really exciting. I love this dish. It's one of these things that, yes, it takes five or ten minutes to get going once you've made your spice paste, but then after that, pour in the coconut milk and just leave it to cook slowly. Your whole house will smell fantastic by the end of it and you'll be rewarded with the stickiest, darkest curry you've ever tasted. So next up, add some palm sugar. This is going to add some great sweetness to the dish and also caramelise slowly as it cooks, giving us that dark, sticky, traditional beef rendang. And also, a whole can of coconut milk. And then take your can of coconut milk and then half fill it with water. Pour that in as well. And then this, I've just taken the fresh coconut grated it roughly and then just toasted it off in a dry frying pan. That's bubbling up and smelling awesome, so just bring it up to a simmer, chuck a lid on top 
and then cook over a low heat for a good two to three hours. So that's been cooking away for about two and a half hours now. And if you take a look in there, that is gorgeous. Really sticky, unctuous, the beef started to break down. Everything's caramelized beautifully. And that is exactly what I'm after. Can't wait to eat it. So to go with that, quite simply, I've just got some steamed rice and some wedges of lime. You don't need anything else, all the flavors in this. So just gonna serve up a bit of rice. If you are a bit short on time, you could try cooking this in a pressure cooker and then it takes around an hour on full pressure. But for me, it's really about the slow cook. I'll give it a good stir. Oh, the smell of that. You just kind of get this punch from the, from the star anise, from the coconut, and from that cinnamon as well. Just finish with a nice squeeze of lime, just to give it a bit of zing. And there we have it. One of my favorite dishes in the world is my Malaysian beef rendang. Absolutely delicious. So that's it for me from this series. I hope you've enjoyed the recipes and hopefully I've inspired you to fill your kitchen with all the smells and flavors of Southeast Asia. I'm off to enjoy this with a cold beer. Cheers.